These are the top five mistakes every investor either continues to make or has made. And guys, I have made every single one of these mistakes in my career, and I'm sure I still make these mistakes to this day. Successful investing is not about knowing the numbers all the time. It's about understanding the emotion. All five of these mistakes basically are emotion-based. And I'm gonna go through them. Mo and I will sit there and explain them. And I'll probably give you some stories about how I felt for these things back in the day. So number five on this list of top five mistakes, when you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of a business. <laughs> That's an absolute fact. And what people don't realize is that when they're buying a stock, they're buying a piece of business, they think they're buying this ticker that goes up and down. Yeah. Mo, you're, you started with trading. To you, when you bought a stock, it, it was- a ticker that goes up and down. Yes, but you had a process for that, right? Right, right. Once you started to learn value investing, you just sat there and learned what? You had to understand the financials of the company and yeah. everything. You couldn't just say, it's a ticker, it's Apple, it's going up today, I'm gonna buy it. Right. Or it's going down, I'm gonna sell it short. Not even that. Uh, it's Apple. It's a great company. It's going to be bigger 10 years from now than today. Mm -hmm. So what I started to realize was this. I had three rules for myself for investing. The first one was, do I think this company is going to be around for the foreseeable future? If the answer was yes, I went to the second thing. Two, do I think they're going to make more revenue and profit in that foreseeable future than they do today? If the answer to that was yes, then the third and final question is, can I pay a reasonable price today for the company? that factors in the future, that gives me an adequate return on my money. Now, the reason those three things matter with when you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of business, that I found that in the long run, stocks were a weighing machine. In the short run, they're a voting machine. That means in the long run, if I paid a reasonable price for a business and the business's revenue and profit went up by 10, my stock was likely to go up by 10 or some factor close to that. That was the big key. When you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of a business. If you pay a good price for the business, as the business gets better, you will do better. Just like if you have a business at home, your friend has a business, and I said to them, what's your business worth today? They said X, and I said, what if it was 10 times larger with profit? They would say, probably worth 10 times more. No different. Mm -hmm. Only difference is we get stuck in Mr. Market every single day telling us, hey, I'm going to pay you this, and you get caught up in the hype and euphoria. Yeah. Okay, number four. The temporary good or temporary bad is permanent. People feel this all the time. This is, this is a perfect, what, think about Fed Day. Yeah. We think about Fed Day, we put so much emphasis on what the Fed is going to decide and think that this is what it's going to be. Markets up, go up, they're going to stay up. They're going to go down, it's going to be catastrophe out there. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Back in 2006, 2007, I met with good friends of mine. They said, Paul, we need help with saving. They were young, et cetera. I said, okay, guys, first question. If stocks fell in half tomorrow, what would you do? I tell a story all the time on this channel because it's my first time ever realizing the glimmer of, wait a second, is investing about numbers or about something else? So I asked the question, what would happen if stocks fell in half? And the wife looked at me and said, well, we'd buy more, right? She said it very tentatively. And I said, perfect, you get it, awesome. Now, what do they invest in? ETFs, just long-term cheap ETFs. They weren't investing in individual stocks. They were buying ETFs. Well, fast forward, the great financial crisis happens. And in early 2009, I get an email. Paul, we're so scared. What are you doing? And I wrote back, I said, well, if you remember our conversation, I asked you if, if stocks fell in half, what would you do? You said buy more. So I'm buying more. She's like, you're actually buying more? I said, well, yeah, that's what we discussed. She goes, well, I'm just worried the stock market would go to zero. And I remember thinking to myself, I can understand if she was buying an individual company that was very volatile or hyped, they could go to zero. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the entire stock market, Mo. Yeah, uh, you have more problems in the world than money if, you're, if the stock market goes to zero. Exactly. <laughs> we have way more problems. And I thought to myself, whoa, and they sold everything. And they ended up buying back in after market already rebounded 30 or 40%. They started buying back in. But they took a, per, a, a temporary down and looked at it as a permanent high. Let's go pull up the S&P 500 in our software. This is the S&P 500 since back in 1990 or so, 1982. Here, it looked awful. Here, it looked awful. This is where she sold everything. Here, it looked awful. Here, it felt really awful last year. Guess what happened? They were temporary. They were temporary issues because the world isn't going to zero. Number three, this is having to do with this. They're too short-term oriented. Too short-term oriented. You know, we talk about the... Um, the little book that beats the market, a method. Of, I hear people all the time say to me like, well, Paul, it hasn't worked. <laughs> this stock has done crap. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, I bought it six weeks ago and it's gone nowhere. I'm like, six weeks? Yeah. 
if you own a business, do you judge your business's performance based on six weeks? Yeah. And by the way, based on six weeks of emotion, because remember, a stock price goes up and down based on what the people in the stock market believe, not the experts. Don't feel that it's experts. You're too short-term oriented. Warren Buffett says, if you can't imagine yourself owning a stock for 10 years, don't own it for 10 minutes. If you're okay buying a stock and the market, stock market shutting down, you can't sell it for 10 years, that's when you should buy. The funny part about that, Mo, is I'd prefer I buy a stock and the stock market shut down for 10 years. Yeah, exactly. Also, think about quarterly earnings and what, what I mean, what we do, we do earnings reactions just because we like to see what's happening out there and show the volatility. People see an earn, a great earnings report come out and the stock just soars. Yep. They think this is it. And a bad earnings report is just the opposite. It's really amazing to see. On a quarterly basis. And you know, that's why I kind of like the European method more. They're, they're more focused on yearly results. I hate the fact that people care. Now, granted, as a value investor, yeah. I like it. I could also like it saying, oh, if they report, look at Tesla today. Tesla reported bad uh, deliveries. deliveries. And at first it tanked like 3%. Now it's back up and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I think it's hilarious that you have trillion dollar companies moving 20% in an afternoon. <laughs> that's happened. Uh, it's a, it's, it's a, happened many times in the last two years. Just think about that for a second. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy, guys. And that's too short-term oriented. You got to be long-term oriented. You're buying a good company for a good price, and there's going to be good times and bad times. They're going to miss sometimes. They're going to beat sometimes. But if you still believe in the thesis, you stick with it. It's all about how much time you spend. It's been proven time and time again. The less moves you make in the market, the better you do. I figure out a way to just blindly let myself just buy. I don't even look at my stock account anymore. I don't even look at it because I don't want to be... I don't want to be blinded by the fact that it's going up and I feel smarter or it's going down or I feel dumber. Not the case at all. You cannot be short-term oriented. You've got to have a long-term outlook. Way easier said than done. But in our community, it's funny. These are the conversations we have all the time. I'll see somebody right in there. Oh my God, I bought the stock three months ago. And people would say, are you in it for three months? Or are you in it for 30 years? I mean, literally people will say that stuff. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it incredible, yeah. Mo? Yeah, it's great. It took me a long time to get through that. It did. Okay, the second one. Sell at lows, buy at highs. This is a very common thing. Back to this chart right here. You can't see it as much, but if you look from here to here, it's like a 45% drop. Here to here is like a 60% drop. Here to here was a 40% drop. You know what ends up happening? People buy more up here and they sell down here. Just like my friend, I just told you about the example. They literally sold as the stock market was falling and they didn't buy back in until they felt comfortable. Guess when they feel comfortable? There's many investors out there who say, I've got to buy in the utmost pessimism. When the pessimism's the highest, that's when the price is the lowest. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah. It is. It's very difficult. It's hard. We were buying Meta last year. I will brag to him blue in the face. Complete dumb luck getting it on this date, but I literally bought Meta at the lowest price. $88 and whatever. Literally at the low on November 4th. I can absolutely prove that with a trade showing it. I don't mean it to say, oh, look at me, I got it. No, I'm just sitting there saying... My goal was I was buying meta all along the way. It put me in a better position to buy it at its low. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Because I sat there and said, I think the hype around the meta fall is over-exaggerated. But the point is, I'm ready to buy meta at other prices. Alibaba is a company I own. Again, don't own these companies just because I do. But the pessimism on China is very, very high. And I'm okay with that. Right? Yep. Now, the very, very, very most important thing, biggest mistake that investors make is... They follow the hype. Uh, Mo, how much have we seen this in the last two years? Oh, my God. It's been, this is the stock market, it seems. This Everybody's is, following the hype. Especially when you get in 14, 15, 16, 17-year-old kids. So that's the thing, guys. When people say to me, oh, well, you know, I think stocks are fine. I go, listen, when I see the people in the market who feel like geniuses, when I'm on a golf course and an 18-year-old kid tries to tell me I'm wrong about Tesla, Bitcoin, and Palantir, I sit there and go, what the heck is going on here? When I see all the hypesters on YouTube, like the Jeremy Financial Education, the Tom Nashes, the Meet Kevins, all hyping these companies that have gone down 90, 95, 100% to bankruptcy, right. and we kept, oh, and the stock mows, we're like, these don't even make sense. Why are you buying these companies? That's when the hype is at its, its peak. Yeah. And when you follow the hype, you are going to have a problem eventually. You might be right a couple of times, but eventually you will be wrong. Back in the dot-com crash, a friend of my father's was a doctor and he took $100,000, I believe, and made it into 5 million. Fast forward a year and a half, and wonderful guy. He never tried to like hide it. I go, hey, how's your portfolio doing? He's like, oh, he's like, oh it's zero. I go, 5 million is zero? He goes, yeah, lost everything. 
because he wrote all these dot-com companies all the way up. He maybe he had like $10,000 up, but the bottom line is he wrote it all the way down. And by the way, even if he'd sold everything at two or three million, I still believe he would eventually end up having problems anyhow because he would have had confirmation. Look how, look how good I was doing at my exactly. process. The worst thing that can happen to you if you're a hype investor is you succeed on something. Yeah, Literally learn your lesson hard. Can happen. Same with me, Global Cross. It's funny, somebody in the community the other day brought up Global Crossing. I said too soon. Global Crossing was my big hype investment that went to zero back in 2000 because my sister's friend's dad said to me, Paul, you want a good, great stock tip? Buy Global Crossing. They're killing it. And sure enough, Forbes magazine had the front, the fastest ever billionaire in 11 months. The CEO became a billionaire. I bought it and watched it go to zero. Watched it go to zero. Mm -hmm. Guys, I learned that way, and it was a cheap lesson for me to learn back then. Back then, it was a lot of money, but nowadays, it's a cheap lesson for me to learn. And that's the big thing. Don't follow the hype. In the short run, stocks are a voting machine. In the long run, they're a weighing machine. What that means is, in the short run, if the news is great, people love it, the stock's going to go up. In the, in the short run, if people hate the stock, for whatever reason, the stock's going to go down. But in the long run, what's going to happen? the fundamentals of the business are going to weigh out. We've shown companies like Intel, let's call Cisco up, Max Chart. It has not hit its 2000 peak. Why? Because it was too expensive back then. Even though the revenue is 57 billion today with 12 billion in profit and back in 2000, it was 19 billion in revenue with 2.7 billion in profit. Their revenue's up 3X, their profit's up 4 or 5X, and yet the stock is down. Why? Well, for one thing, it could be cheap today. It's selling, but it's not cheap. It's selling for 17 and a half times earnings and 19 times five-year earnings. Okay, it's not, relative, it's not super cheap, but guess what? It was just way too overpriced back then. It was making 2.5 billion and valued at half a billion dollars, half a trillion dollars. So 200 to one price to earnings ratio. Mm. In the long run, stocks are a weighing machine. By the way, I'm just bringing up Cisco. There's Micron, there's Intel, there's HPQ. A ton of companies had the same thing happen. So don't fall for that trap. Guys, five mistakes every investor makes. Don't feel bad if you've done all five of them. I've done all five of them. I still do probably all of them at some point or the other. It's about lessening how much you do those. So if you like this, guys, subscribe to the channel. You'll learn a ton more and get better at the emotional side of investing.